And this week, we will introduce the last type of the uh, supervised, supervised machine learning model, which is neural networks. Uh, we now we nowadays have heard um, this uh, model a lot uh, from news, from social media. Uh, so neural network has not <coughs> become very success, uh, especially for handling the uh, natural language processing and also um, or analyze the videos or images. Uh, so we are, neural network is a is a very complicated model. So we are going to touch the surface of the neural network. So we will just introduce probably the simplest uh, type of the neural network. And we will also talk about the model selection so that now we have introduced uh, uh, the most common supervised uh, machine learning models. So how can you select the models? Uh, so for your uh, for your project, see if you if you have a data set and uh, you train the data with different type of models, and which one will be the best for you? Okay, uh, so the neural network. So the neural network model, or sometimes we call it artificial neural network. So that is a model that for both regression and classification. Okay, so neural network model can be used for regression and also for classification. It is called a neural network because it has been motivated by the way that human um, op by the way that our brain operates. So our brain will receive the, um, those signals, um, those neurons will receive signals and they will pass the signals to, uh, to the other neurons and also by doing that we kind of can um, process information okay uh, so neural network is uh, using the same structure so we have those different units so those are simulate the neurons and they will pass information to each uh, to the other neurons or to the other unit in the network model um, and also they are connected, um, so it's so the um, so it is called neural network because it is motivated by the way that human brain operators. Uh, however, so it is it is still um, not as powerful as human brains. Okay, as far as I know, that our human brains is still uh, far way complicated, and then the neurons because we still do not fully understand how our human brains are actually working. And also it is more powerful than the, uh, than the computers that we have. Uh, so most neural networks are black box. So uh, this may sound like a little bit surprising, but because it is very, very complicated, so um, we built the model so we know the structure, but we don't know that how the information has been, um, I mean, how the decision or how the type kind of like code code learning uh, has been formed by the machine. So uh, we can still, we can always see the result like the, the parameters, the weight. Uh, however, so uh, inspecting those weights actually will not give you much more um, information about how they resolve the problem. Uh, so, uh, so in another way, that so understanding or interpret the uh, the details of those those parameters or those outputs, especially those uh, middle output, will not help you to understand how the model is functioning. However, so the result of the model is, is super great. So it has been success, successfully applied in many uh, fields. OK, so uh, the, the model that we are going to talk today is called multilayer perceptrons. So that's MLP. Uh, MLP is one type of this feed forward neural network. Okay, so it's one type of this feed-forward network. And feed-forward network is also one type of the artificial neural network. So we're going to, again, we're going to touch 
um, we'll just talk about one, probably the most uh, simple, the simplest model neural network. And there are a lot of neural network models available. And probably you will need to spend uh, an entire semester to learn um, the other models. Uh, so MLP can be viewed as a generalization of the linear models. Okay, so the simplest way is that so we can think about like say we have the input layer and also we have an output layer. Okay, and for example in this case input layer uh, we have uh, three or uh, four inputs. Okay, one, two, three, four. So um, and also we have one output. Okay, so one output. So um, you can think those input as the independent variables in the linear regression models. Okay, um, and also the output. For example, uh, if we are going to predict the house price based on the number of the uh, bathrooms and also number of the bedrooms, okay, and also the area, okay, um, and also probably the lot size, okay, so for example, we are going to predict the price by using those uh, four features or the four columns. So here each single feature will be an input and the final output will be the house price, okay. And we also have those weights. So those weights are the parameters or the coefficient for each independent variable. So for example, uh, the first weight multiples the number of the bathrooms plus the second weight multiples the number of bedrooms um, and so on. And also finally, we are also at a buyers. OK, uh, we are also at the buyers so that we are We'll use that one to predict the house price. Okay, um, so that is equivalent to the to the uh, linear regression model. So, however, uh, in the MLP, we will add uh, more hidden layers. Okay, more hidden layers, all the hidden units that represent the intermediate processing step. Okay. So for example here, so instead of using two layers, the input layer and also output layer, we provide a hidden layer. Um, and in this hidden layer, we, we said, OK, we want three neurons or three unit. OK, so in that case, uh, we will compute the value of the hidden units first. OK, and next we are using the value of the hidden units to calculate uh, the the final output, so the final price. So for example, the first hidden layer that will um, that will contain that will be calculated by all the three, all the four inputs times its uh, corresponding weights. Okay, so um, this is the weight between the first input and also first uh, hidden unit, and this is the first input, and plus the weight uh, for the second for the second unit and between the first hidden unit okay the, the second input feature and also uh, first hidden layer plus and now we use this weight so this weight is the third input between the third input and also first hidden layer okay and also continue okay and also uh, plus buyers <clears throat> and the second unit is the the value of the second unit is calculated in this way, the same way, and also the value of the third unit is calculated in this way. And uh, finally, when we calculate the final output, for example, the price, so we're using the value of this uh, first hidden uh, unit times the weight between the, the hidden unit and also output unit plus the value of the second hidden unit times the weight between the output and the hidden unit and plus the third one times the weight its weight between uh, the output and plus the buyers okay so we also we always added 
we always add bytes for each single layer, uh, except um, uh, except for the, uh, the output. Okay, uh, so that is a multi-layer uh, structure, and you can bring more layers, and you can for each single layer you can add uh, more units, so that will make uh, the model to be uh, more complicated.